It's a sort of forerunner for the first all weather track there. Um, <laughs> To be able to get to sand and Sean's up. already put that joke in. Oh, has he? Well, I haven't got an earpiece to see, <laughs> so you can hear Sean's jokes. They are few and far between, I must admit, Sean's oh, jokes. Oh, poor Sean. <laughs> he can be quite humorous at times. Um, so, yeah, I mean, just, just tell us a little bit more about actually later. Now we've got a chance because, as we said, I mean, it's pretty much looks set to be a, a one horse race this uh, with the odds on favourite there, two to one on uh, Marco J- JDO. We talked about obviously um, racing there when. Um, when it's low tide, but what, what exactly whereabouts it is in Ireland, etc. It's um, it's north of Dublin, uh, obviously on the coast. <laughs> um, but the the great thing with this is it's a fun meeting. Unfortunately, they got a maximum of ten, I think it is, for all races. But that's fine. There's 60 or 70 horses going to get to run today on ground that's safe. Um, they're not great horses, but it's going to give an awful lot of people in that area a bit of fun. And you do get good crowds there. Do you get lively betting markets? Yeah, you will. Yeah, well, every meeting in Ireland have lively yeah. betting markets. Um, it's just a shame that you get a race like this where you get a long odds on favourite. So the whole betting here today will surround the each way value um, in this race, and nobody will be wanting to back this favourite at all. And um, But it, there's, there's a sort of, as you get on, on most beaches, great big sand dunes, and that's where all the people will be watching the races. Um, but like I say, it's interesting that most of the races are framed that sort of the bigger lads ride them because not too many of the top flat jockeys want to end up at Laytown for an afternoon although it is it is damn good fun but like I said the facilities for everybody are fine they're perfectly adequate it's a once a year thing and and it's part of, of the sort of heritage of Irish racing if you like you see Master Cooper there getting yeah, a smack for his feeling well little buck well and he got a smack I'm not I'd have given a buck and a kick if I got the smack he got it's just trying to wake him up really um, but <clears throat> There is a place for it. There really is a place for a meeting like this, and you know, any place where you can get a crowd in. And it, it, in Ireland, there's an awful lot. It's an awful lot about sort of localised meetings. You take a place like Kilbegan, places like Ballinrobe, <laughs> Belliestown. You know, they don't race very often, and they do all their racing in the summer. They're not great meetings, but they get huge crowds. Okay, they're often running. So let's join Desi. Marco Jadea was prominent on the inside. Master Cooper, Kiana Wanella also in the firing line. Tracking the leaders on the inside is Soaring Eagle, and then comes Gravier's and Animal Lover. Bev, who is next, and where she been is the back marker. So they're racing on now past the five mark, and it's Master Cooper who's just the leader, followed by Great Guns. Marco Giordeo is next, and they're being tracked by Soaring Eagle with Kiana Warnella. Towards the outside is where she been. As they pass the four furlong point, Master Cooper, great guns, and on the inside, Soaring Eagle making headway. Marco Giardeo right there in the center, the yellow jacket of where she been, and they're followed by Kiana Warnell and then Willie Ever and Bev Hu towards the outside. They're racing on now towards the final two, and Soaring Eagle comes there for Wayne Lorden to join Marco Giardeo and Danny Grant. On the outside is Bev Hu improving, but Marco Giardeo has gone for home now under Danny Grant. Bev Hu is on the outside of where she'd been in Soaring Eagle, racing inside the last 200 yards now, and it's Marco Giardeo out clear, chased home by Soaring Eagle, where she'd been, Gravios moves into fourth, but Marco Giardeo wins by four to five lengths for Denny Grant, followed home in second by Soaring Eagle, the judge for third, Gravios and where she'd been. So no real surprises there. Marco JDO, the odds-on favourite, uh, wins the third race at uh, Laytown. I'm just trying to see if uh, Gravier might have got in the frame there. It looks like he, I think he, had, he did. He did. He actually got up for second, or up for third. I mean, third, and, and yeah. I was I was willing him home for the even money for the place. You know, <laughs> um, and basically he was outpaced the whole way once a little bit further than this. But I mean, this favourite had won a long way from home. Um, hard to make any excuses for anything else. The second horse was a soaring eagle. Um, he's always been up there in the firing line and ran his race. And yeah, I'm sure give his give his connections a day out. I mean, let's face it, he's picked up. He's what, having trouble pulling up there. Yeah, I mean, he's picked up nearly two grand in prize money, two well euros, um, for second place prize money. Indeed. In fact, the way he moves across the surface, a surface like that, you're really stretching out. And should bring him across here. Run him on the pulley track. He'll be all right. He'll be running on an all-weather track in Ireland. A track coming near you very soon. <laughs> yeah, watch this space. So no real surprises in that con- contest. We were talking about so- Soaring Eagle having a squeak and indeed Grave, yeah, but um, the odds-on favourite did it nicely. Marco Jadio.
confirmation of the results so far from Laytown. It's a win for number one, Marco Judeo, one to two favourite. The winner second was number seven, Soaring Eagle at 14 to one. And it's officially a photograph for third. I think that uh, Pat's uh, each way thieving bet, uh, Graviers has probably got there. Not an even money winner exactly, but you will get your money back if you got on at uh, five to one, a fifth the odds, of course. So you'll, uh, uh, you have an even money place bet, but you've lost your win bet on that one, but it uh, looks like no harm done if you took uh, Pat's advice and took the Ichi Wazy's thieving choice. Officially, though, a photograph for third. Now, here's the market at Chepstow for our 420. This is a horse that uh, we flagged up earlier on today at, at the races as a uh, possibly the hot pot of the day at Chepstow. Stefano is its name. Even money on the tissue. Six to four, the racing post. Forecast Barry Hill's runner, Dara Holland, on board. Bidding for a, a fairly rapid hat-trick. Has a five, uh, six-pound penalty, I beg your pardon, for its latest win. And is odds-on, and has been odds-on for most of today. Uh, trading around the 10 to 11 mark, and that's what it's opened at 10 to 11. Second best in the market, Captain Marriott at 9 to 2. Quick Sticks is 9 to 1. Nuts for you has been uh, pretty easy to back throughout the day as a 12 to 1 chance. Go Green is also 12 to 1. Rabbit at it is 20 to 1. 12 bar Blues, Mustang Alley, and Sierra are all 25 to 1 chance. That's got to be a forecast, hasn't it? 12 bar Blues, and Mustang Sally, that nearly sounds like. Right. Enough waffle. Let's confirm the result for you at Laytown. And third was number five, Gravier. <laughs> Pat's each way selection of five to one. So confirmation of the full result at Laytown. One, Marco Jadio. Seven, Soaring Eagle. Five, Gravier. The SP's two to one on the favourite. One, four, 14 to one, the runner up and five to one, the third. Thirty-two-red.com. Are you a homeowner who could benefit from an ocean finance loan? Perhaps by reducing your monthly outgoings by consolidating existing debts, home improving, or simply treating yourself to whatever you have in mind. Many already have. Myself and the wife, chose Ocean Finance because they were so helpful on the phone and understanding with the situation we were in at the time. It was beginning to get to a stage where we were just working to pay bills and we wanted to be able to live a little bit. They told you what you needed to know, not babble you with science or whatever. We found that Ocean Finance was the one that came up with the answers and didn't cause any complications. Look for whoever you like, but before you've finished, give Ocean Finance a try. Ocean consider all circumstances and rates are competitive. So for that homeowner loan of up to £100,000, call us now on 0800 916 9120 or apply online at oceanfinance.co.uk. A Chelsea cashback mortgage is the easy way to get your hands on a substantial cash lump sum. Several thousand pounds to spend whenever you wish on whatever you want. You don't have to move home and there are no arrangement fees. It's easy too. Everything can be arranged by phone and post. To find out more, including whether you could save money on your repayments, Call free on 0800 341 341. The Chelsea Cashback Mortgage. Of course, you might already know how you'll spend your cash lump sum. 32redpoker.com Welcome back to Chepstow. We're looking ahead then to uh, the next race here, and uh, this is uh, the Tote Sport Handicap. Horses running over the trip of a mile of course, a pretty big field in this, but I can tell you that uh, Princess Pessa is a uh, non-runner, and also uh, down the bottom there, Frangipani, number 15, is a non-runner in this particular race. So we've been taking a look at uh, a few of them as they've been walking around the paddock, first of all, and uh, Stefano is the one that we clearly need to talk about, vying for the hat-trick here, it supported on the exchanges this morning, Barry Hill's runner. Uh, he looks a picture in the paddock, he's a lovely horse he is. 
lovely attitude, good walker. Absolutely no negatives about this one at all. Um, he looks head and shoulders above his opposition in that his well-being, his temperament. Um, and to be honest about it, looking at him in the paddock, looking at his form coming into the race, he deserves to be an odds-on shot. Yeah, he's won over the trip. He has all the cred right credentials for today. He's got that six-pound penalty. It shouldn't be, it should be easy enough to defy. Uh, of a rating of 65, he still looks well handicapped. Basically, he's been a horse I'd say slow enough to come to himself. Um, but he, he's just a really nice horse. Um, you know, you, I love to see a horse when he's walking and sort of that swagger on his tail. You know, and uh, as I said, there's just so much to like about him. Another one, I'd be very surprised if he wasn't seen out over hurdles this winter. Exactly. Um, you know, he's just that type of horse. You know. He's going to end up in one of the big jumping yards and he's going to go on from there. Mile and a quarter, probably stay further than that as well on his pedigree. Um, being out of a warning mare, although being by a physio, there's plenty of pace. But he obviously defies his pedigree because he gets a mile and a quarter really well. And that's for you, Roger Charlton's runner. He's been off the track for some time, um, having his first start, or her first start, I should say, this season, this filly by uh, Shree Pekin. Um, Roger Charlton, obviously, there, there hasn't been really much support for this one, um, but uh, you'd have to respect him having a 33% strike rate with his older horses at this track. It certainly looks fit enough. She's a filly very long on her back, but she looks well, sweating a little bit, but that's probably just a bit of a... She's perfectly calm in the paddock, but is sweating. It's quite a warm, muggy day. It is warm, and it is muggy, although be it, there's a bit of a breeze up here where we are but there's no breeze down in the paddock because that's sort of 10 foot lower than we are you know mm. um, and horses will sweat a bit and particularly first time at the races for a year as well I mean the form of his run in Southwell um, second behind Nessim Dorma was a fair run that race has drawn up a couple of winners um, I mean on the face of it it's got plenty to do to beat Stefano and you really would like to see some market support for it before you'd fancy it but yeah. as horses go she's absolutely fine she looks fit we should talk about um, Captain uh, Marriott. Where's it gone there? Captain Marriott, because uh, Captain Marriott, so we've spoken about the form, haven't we, already? I mean, he's been beaten um, by the favourite Stefano, and that was uh, beaten three lengths, and getting three pounds on that occasion. So you, you wouldn't, although weighted to probably reverse the form today, you really wouldn't expect it. No, he's only four pound better off today, isn't he? And four pound isn't going to be enough for the way he was beaten last time. To be honest with Captain Marriott, I mean, he just looks like one of those horses that lacks the change in gear. He probably, in time, as he gets stronger we'll get a mile and a half again another one who'll probably go jumping in, in this winter he'll probably get sold on I don't know by a syndicate they might well keep him um, by inch and or on pedigree this should be his trip but as I say he does look like he lacks a gear there he is he looks like a fairly nice type though you just see him walking around the paddock yeah, there's nothing to, nothing to dislike about him at all. He's got a lovely bit, lovely wide open eye, and I like that in a horse. But from what we've seen of him on the race course so far, as I say, it's hard to make a case for him turning over Stefano. We should also maybe talk about uh, Mick Shannon's runner. Mick obviously uh, won the first race here this afternoon. He's got quick sticks, uh, uh, filly by night shift. Yeah, nice type as well. Uh, again, another one that's really likeable. But on form, has got plenty to find. Um, rated 68, and that's probably harsh enough for what she is at this stage in time. Won a little race on the all weather, I think, I'm sure it was, at uh, Linkfield. Um, but like we said, mixed horses have been generally out of form all the summer. They are winning now. Um, he's had a winner here today. And maybe, you know yourself, when stables come into form, suddenly they can leave all yep. past performances behind them. But again... Stables and indeed horses, when they hit that window of form, don't they? Like the horse like Stefano. Yeah, exactly. And that's why I think he'll be hard to beat. I think he'll enjoy the ground. He'll enjoy the track. He, he, there's no reason to think that he won't. But, I mean, as horses go, as horses go... Um, Quick sticks is a nice type, and and uh, it's got great Compact depth. To it. Oh yeah, got great depth, really, really good depth. Um, and I mean, she looks more like a colt than a filly. That's a nice thing about her. So it tells you how strong she is. Yeah. And that being the case, <laughs> yeah. And that being the case, you're a little bit surprised that she hasn't sort of gone on from her first win, if you like. But I just think that the handicapper took a fairly harsh view of her, sort of early on, and and that can be sort of hard to get over. I mean, okay, she's only a pound lord in her last runs, but I don't think a pound is enough to make her win. OK, well, the jockeys are just mounting up for the 4.20, our next live race action here at Chepstow. We're going to take a short break for now. Don't go away. 32red.com Are you one of the thousands of people who would like to raise some money? Perhaps to start your own business, but you've been knocked back because you've no proof of income. Maybe to buy your council house, but you have CCJs. You'd like to reduce your monthly credit card and loan bills, but you have arrears. You need to buy your ex's half of your home after a split, 
your bank has turned you down. You want the money for home improvement, but you can't afford the monthly payments. An APS remortgage could be the way forward. If you want convenience, without forms to fill in and no references taken, step forward. If you need the money quickly, come to us. If you need one lower monthly payment, walk this way. If you're a homeowner and need a remortgage for any purpose, call APS. APS, moving forwards. Jack, whatever's come over I'm just you. hungry, that's all. Why, what's the matter with you? Nothing's the matter with me, Jack. I'm all right. <laughs> the good old days. What a carry-on and not a care in the world. But as you get older, you may start to think about leaving a little extra behind for your family or helping towards funeral expenses. The guaranteed over 50 plan can do just that. From only six pounds a month, it pays a fixed cash sum when you've gone. If you're between 50 and 80, you're guaranteed to be accepted with no medical. To find out how you could leave that little bit extra behind, simply call 0800 50 55 50 for a personal quotation. There's even a choice of free gift when you take out the plan. Call Axa Sun Life today on 0800 50 55 50 and find out how the guaranteed over 50 plan can leave your loved ones more than just happy memories. <laughs> oh, wacko. This is a whole-of-life insurance policy. If you cancel your plan, you'll get back much less than you've paid in and nothing in the early years. 32redpoker.com Welcome back to Chepstow, our next live race action here, not far away, but uh, first I have to report some sad news that uh, unfortunately Snow Ridge has passed away. He actually died of laminitis. You remember Snow Ridge, who's uh, owned and trained by Godolphin, was actually uh, last year as a two-year-old trained by Marcus Dragoning, and of course we'll see a clip of him in one of his finest hours when he uh, won the Royal Lodge as a juvenile. But uh, you will remember he was anti-post favourite, in fact, for the Guineas, the 2000 and guineas this year and then again the derby but uh, just didn't stay the trip in the derby but a lovely horse a beautiful horse a great big scopey type of horse i know martin Dwyer loved him when he was at marcus Dragonings, and when he won at uh, Ascot, it came from well off the pace and so they just got there in the death but it, it, he looked to all intents and purposes like a horse that was crying out for a derby horse but he did run really well in the 2000 guineas came there with his chance in the derby and just simply didn't get home i mean let's face it frankie the tory chose to ride him didn't he in the, in the derby yeah. um but real decent horse and a big, big loss to Godolphin. I must say, real commiserations, not only to Godolphin, but also to uh, Marcus Dragoning as well and the team, because I actually remember going down and visiting their yard um, some time before Snow Ridge actually even ran. And I remember uh, it was Arthur Daly and, and Martin Dwyer, they were both saying, God, that's the best two-year-old we've ever sat on. And yeah. uh, I remember backing him at Kempton when he won the conditions race and beat the odds-on favourite that was uh, John Dunlop runner. And I really thought this horse is a bit special, and they, they, they did it as well. But um, a horse like that dying of a condition... Um, like laminitis is quite unusual, is it, in thoroughbreds? It's very unusual in, in thoroughbreds in training. You often get stallions who have been stood at stud for a few years will get laminitis. There was a very high-profile stallion died earlier this year from laminitis, who, whom I can't name. Um, but obviously that's a different thing. But the problem with, with a lot of horses in training is they've been fed very high-protein diets, and, and with some of them it just simply will react against them. Um, I mean, it just goes to show you the ups and downs of the racing game. Godolphin can do no wrong this season and yet there they go they lose one of their nicest three rolls I know it's a real tragedy we're going to take a look at uh, the Royal Lodge now this is obviously from Ascot last year when he won as a two year old and we'll, we'll see him in action just now and as you're saying it's, it's very unusual you know you have these conditions which are often I mean there's grass sickness as well they lost uh, obviously Sheikh Mohammed lost a Dubai millennium to that and that's quite unusual but again sort of something to do perhaps well not with protein necessarily there it's something no, it's a toxin. still studying yeah. exactly what it's doing. Exactly, that's a toxin. I mean, this performance here was incredible. It stamped him a real good horse, way off the pace, well out of position, turning into the straight. To all intents and purposes, this race was, go was gone beyond recall. But the turn of foot that he produced inside the last furlong and a half was absolutely incredible. And probably, you know, he's been put in front of... You look at the, the replay that he said, brilliant ride by Mark and War. But it was actually a race that didn't work out for him. He was a long way off the pace turning in. It showed what a high-quality horse he was to sort of quicken up like that and go and win yeah. um, and this is what I was saying earlier on about horses optimum 
certain trips. Often when they're running to their optimum trip, they look like they need to but go further. what was his optimum trip? Though? This is the thing. It was know, a it mile. Was, it was definitely a mile. And I'm sure he would have gone a mile and a quarter, but I wouldn't mind betting that when that, that horse fully grew into himself, that a mile would have been his trip. Because you must remember, he was a very big two-year-old. Yeah. So hence, he was probably big and weak early on as a three-year-old. Mm -hmm. And that often happens. Yes, they're strong enough at the end of their two-year-old season to go through their races and get away with it. But at some stage, they've got to fill the frame. And they're going to go like sort of 16-year-old te teenagers. They're all legs and arms and can't cope with it. But big, big loss. Big loss to racing. Yeah, commiseration once again uh, to Godolphin for the loss of Snow Ridge. Okay, if you want to find out a little bit more about that story, then you can read, uh, follow it up on www.attheraces.com on the internet. Anyway, starting to load for uh, the 420, so just get, get some final thoughts, but first of all, we're going to show with Sean. Well, very firm favourite indeed is this Stefano, now four to five from an opening 10 to 11. Was uh, forecast to be odds against. I think you'd have had to get up pretty early to get any odds against about Stefano today. Captain Marriott, five to one. Quick Sticks is nine to one. Rabbit at it, they are nibbling at. 20 to one, 16 to one, 14 to one now, Rabbit at it. Nuts for you and Go Green also on that mark. <coughs> In fact, 16 to one now, Nuts for you and Go Green. 20 to 1 Mustang Alley, Sierra 25 to 1, 12 Bar Blues is 28 to 1. There are a couple of non runners, don't forget, in this uh, event at Chepstow. They go with that numbers 1 and 15. Last one stepping forward. I think we're both on this odds on favourite here. Stefano, just one more to load. Let's join Mark. Thanks, Zoe. Last one forward will be quick sticks Chris Catlin looking for his second winner of the afternoon just a little reluctant to go forward needing a fair bit of persuasion last one to go forward is quick sticks into stall number four and that'll complete the lineup for this tote sport handicap quick sticks has gone in we're all set And they're off, racing over a mile and a quarter. Offbeat was slow away, and slow, so too was uh, Premier Dream, slow into stride. Settling down through the first furlong, and Sadalina Sierra is one of the first to show towards the inside of Rabbit at it. They're the two leaders. In the third place is Nuts for You, and then comes Sierra. Just in behind them races 12 Bar Blues. And then uh, just behind the leaders, taking quite a keen grip, is Captain Marriott. Stefano with the pink sleeves going up to hunt up the leading bunch. Then towards the outside is Uncle John. Mid-division at this stage is Mustang Alley as they make their uh, journey towards the end of the fast straight. That one uh, is followed then towards the outside by Go Green, an offbeat who's made up some of the ground lost at the start. As they uh, head towards the end of the back straight, Premier Dream still about four lengths behind the main body of the field. But up front, it's Rabbit at it leading by just about a length from uh, Nuts for You in second place. Seda Lena Serra is close up behind them in third. And then comes 12 Bar Blues just being niggled back in fourth place. Then towards the outside of the black cap is Sierra from Go Green, who's made ground on the outside of Quick Sticks and Stefano going the shortest way. Then Uncle John and Offbeat as they swing the corner from Mustang Alley. Medica Bobas towards the rear. Captain Marriott still held up with only a few behind, and the back marker is Premier Dream. So they come to pass the four furlong marker, and up front it uh, continues to be Rabbit added, leading the way, a length clear from in second place, Nuts for You. These two lead from Sadalina Sierra towards the inside with the red cap. Stefano's being asked for an effort against the rail, trying to pick up ground as. 12 bar blues comes into contention on the outside with the green sleeve. Sierra is also making ground with quick sticks, also in green colours, making progress towards the leaders. But inside the two, it's nuts for you, who's now raced on from Sadalina Sierra. Then making ground now is Stefano coming through to dispute second place and quick sticks on the outside. But it's nuts for you with the advantage inside the final furlong. Stefano getting into gear, but it's still a length and a half down. Then quick sticks and Sadalina Sierra finishing well. Is Captain Marriott on the outside, but it's nuts for you driven out to towards the line, holding Stefano by a length, finishing well to take third was Captain Marriott from Quick Stick, Sadalina Sierra, and then Mustang Ali, who was never dangerous.
Well, nuts for you wins then for Roger Charlton beating the odds on favourite Stefano and it was worth really trying to take a chance with this and nuts for you who's been off the track for some time having her first run this season because she's really boosted once again the excellent strike rate that Roger Charlton has with these kind of runners at this particular track. It got a wonderful ride, it was always in position A, bang up on the pace, getting a nice toe along, riding it to what it does best which is get the trip well. Stefano got a lovely run around the rail and then all of a sudden he'd know where to go, he's come off the bridle, he's not going forwards and basically because he's running up the backs of horses, Darrow's then had to go and make his own gap to get out and all the time you're having to wedge out and your horse is not on an even keel, but by then Nuts For You has gone for home um, and has taken the race. Like I say, to me that's that's what a wonderful ride is. Fergus Sweeney was in position A from the second of Epta Stores. He was patient though as well, wasn't oh, yeah. he? I mean, it, he she struggled. did have the run of the race but he didn't go too soon. You know? No, not at all. I mean, he's known it's his first run for the season. He rides work at, at Roger Charlton, so he's probably sat on this several and times. Do you think Pat, you know, is pretty much aware of the fact that Daryl Holland was tucked in behind on stage? No, he, he wouldn't have known that because he'd have never seen Daryl from start to finish. The fact is, what makes this such a good ride is, is that he's ridden his own race, and like I say, he's in position A all the time. He, he's in his, the great Jim McGrath is he's in the box seat position, tracking the leader, getting a good toe. Everything's right. Stef Stefano stayed on really well when he got into daylight. He, he's put daylight between him and the third. Basically, he's lost a horse race, but to me, he hasn't lost anything in ability. He's going to be better, I think, when he yeah. steps up a bit further in trip. But he's been probably beaten by a three-year-old who's unexposed and well handicapped. Yeah, and he was boxed in a little bit, and uh, you'd have to say that Nuts for You does have the run of the race. So she's actually she's quite a big filly, isn't she, Nuts for You? Just looking at her there, she almost uh, dwarfs her. Yeah, she is a big filly, and I mean, to be fair to be fair to her, she did look fairly straight in the paddy. She's a pretty long, long rangey filly, and you'd imagine that she's going to sort of strengthen and get better as she goes along. Yeah, Roger's obviously taking his time with her. Yeah, but he's a great man, he's got more patience than God, hasn't he? <laughs> and of course, these colours are, are the colours of uh, Dorothy's friend, aren't they, who's another good stare. Um, and I mean, it probably is that this, this one's best trip, whereas Stefano's going to step up. I mean, at the end of the day, to me, that was a wonderful ride by Fergus Sweeney, and Stefano just didn't get the run of the race. Yeah, and a nice price too, Sean. A hell of a price. 16 to 1 last year. I say a hell of a price. This was uh, 11 to 2 second favourite in the Racing Post forecast. 7 to 1 on the industry tissue, which obviously had Stefano a bit shorter. Stefano, one of those very short price uh, handicap favourites who uh, sometimes pays to oppose but nuts for you was one that we flagged up as a negative it did drift significantly uh, this morning people have laid this at uh, around about 33 to 1 on the exchanges and it's uh, another illustration of the bandwagon effect that you do get with these market movers and as we've said before the fact that a price lengthens or drifts can be all kinds of reasons for it and it's not always anything to do with the horse's prospects it's a win for number 11 nuts for you at 16 to 1 second was number 7 Stefano the 5 to 6 favourite third was number 12 Captain Marriott at 5 to 1 they went without one Principessa and 15 Fran Japani, which means you guessed it it was a 16 runner handicap 14 ran now they're betting at Laytown on the next the 4.30 well, as you can see, the runners arriving down at the start for this six furlong handicap. And I can tell you that at Laytown, we've got a, a clear favourite now. Have had joy favourites on the opening show, but in the gods is now clear favourite ahead of Or Dons, who's four to one, six to one, Bloom of Tara, six to one, Rebel Queen, seven to one, Tango Step, eight to one, Arts Pet. It's ten to one, Bardos. 32red.com the kitchen was busy and I slipped on some food that hadn't been cleared up. I bashed my knee very badly. I actually saw the National Accident Helpline on telly. They got me £5,400 and they were really nice people. If you've had an accident recently that wasn't your fault, find out free if you can make a no-win, no-fee claim. Call the National Accident Helpline now on 0800 556 557. Has your work made you ill? Or have you lost a loved one through work-related illness or injury? Over two million people in Britain are suffering due to sickness or accidents caused by their work. Are you one of them? My name's Anne Davis. If so, your claim 
could help you. My husband worked with asbestos. The service is free, and we can normally tell you straight away if you have a claim. And your advisor will always be at the end of the phone if there is anything you're unsure about. Your claim has helped many thousands of people to improve their lives. Thanks very much for the bike. You could be the next. Phone 0800 050 1111. Looking for a loan company that listens to you and understands what you want, offers a huge choice of loans and mortgages, provides great customer service and more? Well, if you're a homeowner, call Purple Loans free on 0800 499 499. They promise to act fast and aim to get you the best deal, even if you've had problems getting finance elsewhere. So whether it's that dream holiday you've been promising yourselves, improving your home with a fantastic new kitchen, clearing your existing debts and reducing your outgoings, or even a brand new car. Add colour to your life and call Purple Loans now on 0800 499 499 or reply online. 32redpoker.com so big well done to Adam Huey. Well done, Adam. Go on over and receive that trophy. Well, welcome back. Our next live race action comes up at Leyden. It's the 4.30 and it's the Piper Heidsick Handicap over six furlongs, or Laytown, I should say. It sounds like I was saying Leyton in the East End, but clearly <laughs> you can see from the pictures there that we're very far away from there. Um, in the Gods, last time we checked, was a uh, favourite now, 5-2 to two from 7-2. to two. Um, So this one was actually down in the in your racing post as a reserve, so it must have been um, a non-runner in this particular contest for In the Gods to be getting a run today. Would you fancy his chances? Yeah, he's got some sort of a chance for sure. I mean, he formerly was fairly... fairly. Uh, he never won a whole lot of races, but the fact is he was always fairly consistent. Hasn't run now for 50 days, and I'm sure that's a negative to him. Hasn't shown a great deal other than in one run, which was a pretty low affair this year. Wouldn't be one for me, but you must remember that the top the top rated in this race is a horse rated 53. So we are... We Sorry, I have to cut you off. They're off and running. Let's go and join Desi. Who is in the gods and they're being tracked in the early stages towards the near side by Euro Route. But on settling down, Aerocom Royal leads in the gods, then Tango Step. Arts Pet is next with towards their outside is Primo Supremo. Just behind them is Bloom of Tara as they settle down now and race towards the Final half mile just inside it, Aerocom Royal in the lead from Ard's Pet, Ordon's the far side, then comes in the Gods, towards the near side is Tango Step, on the near side is Primo Supremo, as they begin now to race towards the final two and a half, Aerocom Royal in the centre, Pat Cosgrove just the leader, in the Gods on the far side, Rory Cleary, and then comes Tango Step making a challenge, on the near side from Michael Huzzy, also staying on is Bloom of Tara, now Tango Step comes to join Aerocom Aerocom Royal with Bloom of Tara moving into third and then in the gods but inside the last 150 yards it's Tango Step with Bloom of Tara finishing very strongly on the inside as they go towards the line. Bloom of Tara just gets the better of Tango Step. Aerocom Royal is third, fourth in the gods. Arts Pet is fifth. So Bloom of Tara wins there, just uh, on the rails. Back in second was Tango Step. Ericom Royal was third, and uh, the favourite in the gods just running into fourth there. Yeah, I mean, basically it is what it is, isn't it? Four horses all with a chance inside the last furlong. Bloom of Tara on the very strong ride from Franbury. Um, at nine seven, and he was strong on this as well because he's at the one is at length and a half to make up inside the last furlong. At this stage, in the top, the Tango Step would yeah. win. Um, with Aircon Royal sort of staying on, but Fran got a great run out of his right up the rail, and he's actually won going away in the finish. Yeah, I really thought Tango Step might have been held on there, but um, you know, it was uh, Bloom of Tara, as you said, getting a run up the rail under Fran Berry to win the fourth race there from Laytown. We can give you the full SP now back in the studio with Sean. That is the winner in. Uh, Shards, it's a, it's a close finish though, isn't it? And uh, Bloom of Tara and uh, Fran Berry timing its run absolutely spot on. It did look as though Tango Step had done enough, didn't it? But uh, it's going to be overhauled right in the shadow of the post. It is officially a photograph at uh, Laytown between on the far side, number nine, Bloom of Tara. On the near side with the noseband is number seven, Tango Step. And back in third there is number two, Aerocom. Royal, there's uh, not too much doubt about the outcome, but officially a photograph. In fact, that photograph now being 
called officially. So nine Bloom of Tara is the winner. Seven Tango Step is second, and two Ericom Royal is third. That's the one, two, three. Now confirmed officially at Laytown. Just waiting on the starting prices to filter through as well. Which they will do shortly. Here we go. Six to one, the winner. That's Bloom of Tara. Tango Step was runner-up. That was seven to one, the second. And the third horse, Ericom Royal, returned at 12 to one. Six, seven, and 12 to one, the starting prices for the 4.30 at Laytown. So we can look ahead. We've got a couple more races coming up from Chepstow. If I can just find the actual page. Um, just time to look ahead to our penultimate race, which is uh, Handicap Horses rated 46 to 55. Um, we've got a couple of these that uh, have got pretty good chances. Yorkie's Boy might be tricky to beat in this one. Bint Royal comes into it and Dido. But we'll be looking ahead to it uh, further when we come back after this short break. 32red.com here at the Royal General, the situation is reaching epidemic proportions. Calm down, dear. Calm down, dear. He's been exposed to those commercials for cheaper car insurance, me sure. It's only a commercial. But because eSure specialised in insuring good drivers, you could save up to £195. Email 28. Four years no claims discount. Saved. Hello, Mum. Hello. Find out how much you could save. Call eShore now on 0845 045 5545 or save an extra 10% at eShore.com. Have you been injured? Want to know if you can claim compensation with no deductions? You could by using our no-cost-to-you service. Our claims are processed by phone and post. Your claim will be progressing the moment you pick up the phone, ensuring that you receive your cheque as soon as possible. If you've been hurt in a car accident, even if you weren't driving, had an accident at work, slipped or tripped anywhere, it's easy. All you do is pick up the phone and call us free. P.I. Helpline! Let us take the pain from your claim. Because I have a bad debt record and am self-employed, I couldn't get a loan. I found it difficult to prove my income, even though I own my own home. I just couldn't release any money. First-class mortgages were different. They weren't condescending about the situation, and they worked hard for me to find a remortgage suitable. I got a new car and a holiday as well. My home was going to be repossessed. My wife had lost her job and the debts had got out of control. We'd found it very difficult to cut down on our lifestyle, and we thought there was no chance of getting a remortgage until I called First Class Mortgages. They came up with a solution that saved our home, managed our debts for us, and now we're back on track. We work hard for homeowners, finding a financial solution where other companies may not be able to help. We are quick to respond, no forms to fill in, and we give simple, clear advice whatever your needs. Everyone is treated individually. First Class Mortgages. Free call 0800 107 2233. Thirty-two-red-poker.com. Welcome back to Chepstow. Well, Godolphin are having a terrific season. They had a fantastic Royal Ascot. They've continued a run of good form throughout the season. In fact, they had a four-timer yesterday at Doncaster. And don't forget, they've got the hot favourite for the big race at the weekend, the Irish Champion Stakes in Doyen. Well, Mike Casamal went up to Newmarket to meet the team. Welcome to Godolphin Stables in Newmarket. This is the home of all the Godolphin Blue Bloods and of course Doyen heading for the big Bailey's Irish Champion Stakes at Leperstown on Saturday. But it's a double Group 1 challenge for the team because they've got Rule of Law, who's got a favourites chance in the Betfair.com St Ledger. Six a.m. on the lime kilns, and Frankie's up early and raring to go because he's got the leg up on his favourite horse. The job this morning is to put the stable star through his paces to get him spot on for Leopardstown on Saturday. The horsepower on display was awesome. Even the stable's lesser lights looked fabulous, and we were privileged to join racing manager Simon Crisford to watch it all. Now, where's Doyen got to? No, that's not him. 
let's not get too excited just oh there he is that's him on the right oozing class as he went through an effortless six furlong workout with a far from useless Nahif. Mind you, he went quite well too, didn't he? And Saeed was wearing a sort of contented expression afterwards. Saeed, first of all, can I thank you for letting out the races' cameras into the, into the yard here. It's been an exciting morning. Doyen, did he please you? Yeah, he worked very good. Frankly, he, uh, he rode him, and also he, he rode him last week. He, uh, and uh, both work, you know, he was working really very well. Today he was really brilliant. This is the final work for him. Uh, but we are really happy with him. He's in good condition, in good form. You know, uh, now we drop him, uh, you know, uh, in distance, man and quarter. Uh, but uh, the horse, he have the, the class, you know. And uh, after what we saw the last two races, at Ascot, we know the horse he would be good enough to win the race. Well, Frankie, Doyen looked awesome there. How did he feel? Fantastic. Um, very exciting. And uh, like I told you earlier, he's worth getting up in the morning. He's um, some machine is. He's a wonderful horse. Yeah. You've, you've been riding him for quite some time now towards the end of the last season. Mm. How much has he improved? He's improved a lot. I mean, last year I really liked him a lot and I, I knew he would be one of our stars. And, uh, but the horse was you know, very big and very weak and uh, the transaction between three and four is being magnificent, it's really strengthened up and uh, we have the ultimate racing machine now. It's a frightening thought to think he could be even better next year, isn't it? But how exciting as well. Well, uh, the horse is by Sudder Dwells and uh, I mean, I, I, I go from his, for his condition, you know, the way he look. Uh, every time he, he run, he look better than before then uh, give us like uh, you know some COVID for, for the future for next year he'd be better and but I mean from the way he, he ran and he won both races he was really brilliant and you know uh, it wasn't like it looked in the bride easy for him easy it was a cakewalk for Doyen when he smashed the track record in the Hardwick stakes at Royal Ascot in June Doyen returned to Ascot the following month and now classed a high-class field in the King George. Challengers going with him, hard buck on the inside, running a big race. Gamut stays on, then Suleimani and Valion Chante, but Doyen begins to stretch now inside the final furlong. He's got three legs on hard buck. Suleimani runs on in third, then Gamut. Doyen is really delivering here. The favourite's going to go on and win in mightily impressive fashion. Doyen wins the King George. Those races at Ascot were both over a mile and a half. What about dropping back to 10 furlongs at Leopardstown? I'm not worried at all. <laughs> when you ride the yen, you never worry. He's, uh, you know, he's, he seems to be very fresh and very focused. And, uh, you know, I'm not worried because uh, Leopardstown is really stiff and uh, he's a good horse that uh, gets the trip really well. And he's going left handed as well. Any chinks in his armour at all? I hope he travels well. <laughs> I hope he doesn't get seasickness. It's a great race though, isn't it? You know, Asamoah and, and Grey Swallow for Ireland. It is a wonderful race. I mean, I won the race with some great champions and, uh, you know, he's won the King George by three lengths and got the Ascot right record. So, uh, he's, he's the one that everybody's got to beat. How does Doyen rank in the, in the great sort of uh, horses you've ridden so far? Well, he's, uh, for looks, he's probably the best looking horse I've ridden in my life. And, uh, uh, you know, he's got a feature with one of the best horses I've ridden. Uh, he's won the King George by three legs, and uh, that tells you a story. And uh, if he gets one, this one in the bag on Saturday, then it'd be one of the greats. So, Frankie goes to Ireland, and that means opportunity knocks for Godolphin's number two, Karen McAvoy, who will ride rule of law in the St Ledger. After a close call in the derby, McAvoy put rule of law through his paces on a foggy Monday morning. Even the regular work watchers couldn't see it, so how did he go? Yeah, he's done a nice piece of work. He's uh, a horse that's not a, a great track worker or, or workhorse in the morning, so, um, but he's given me a nice feel. Uh, like you said, the fog played havoc. We couldn't really see much, but um, you know, he's in great order. Um, and he, he's nice and relaxed and looks, uh, looks like a good chance on Saturday. And a serious chance of you winning your first British Classic, having been placed a couple of times already. 
That's right, it's an exciting week. Um, I have to pinch myself really to think in my first season uh, I might win a Classic and uh, you know, I've got a good chance um, and hopefully everything can go right on, on the weekend. No doubt you've assessed the opposition there. Which ones are you really afraid of? Well, they're, they're all, uh, you know, it's going to be a tough race. We've got Marahill, obviously Quiff if she takes place and, and also Let the Lion Roar. Um, percussionist is there as well so you know they're all good staying types uh, you know it's going to be a really interesting race and I'm not getting too confident or, or overconfident because anything can happen in racing that's for sure. A mile and a half it was like a piece of the best distance you know for him. Uh, mile and six another two for longs I think the horse he, you know because currently he rode him and he knows the horse really very well you need to keep him Relax. He don't want, like drop him. I mean, send him clear or uh, early, close in front. No, uh, drop him behind. Relax. It will be good, uh, good for him. Uh, if he done that, that means the horse you have a great chance. You know, turn and there is. Does he give you the feel of a horse that will stay a mile and three quarters? I think so. It's uh, always a question mark, but um, they've all got to run over the mile and six. So um, you know, it's just hopefully my horse can stay the better. He's definitely a, a relaxed horse who. It gives you the impression you'll stay the trip, so fingers crossed. You like the race, don't you? It is really the best. I mean, the classic race is in England is the best in the world. And um, like what you know, it's hard to win it. We won it twice before, but and we tried with different things, with different horses, but uh, it wasn't really good enough to win it. But this year, at least we have the horse here, won group two and second the derby, then, you know, at least he has the class, you know, to run uh, really well. Where will you be, Say? Will you go to Ireland or Doncaster? Well, uh, in the past, usually in Ireland. You know, we had uh, success there. And uh, sometimes we won both races the same day. It's difficult, difficult to, to choose, but uh, since we get close, then we'll see what's Mohammed and Simon, you know, the team. We'll decide later. <laughs> So the sun rises on another work morning at the Equine School of Excellence. Doyen seems to know he's earned top marks. And as I thank the teacher like an excited schoolboy, meanwhile the head boy was lapping it all up. Red.com. Hi, I'm Lorraine and I've been a smoker for 19 years now. I've decided to give up and I'm going to do that on Monday. Hopefully I'm going to succeed this time. I'm going to try nicotine lozenges. Why not give it a go with me? Hello. News is just in that Halifax has unveiled its lowest ever personal loan rate. Over to Howard. Let's see if it's true. Yes, their typical rate really is an amazingly low 6.5%. Back to the studio. Howard Brown now has more details. Get a typical rate of 6.5% on your personal loan and enjoy a repayment holiday for the first three months. Just call free on 0800 338 339. How revealing. And that number again, 0800 338 339. Oh, now then. I wish I'll go on my holidays. I was driving home from work when suddenly a car swerved across the road and hit me head on. My neck and back were badly hurt. I phoned the National Accident Helpline. Their local solicitor got me £3,400. She was really great. If you've had an accident in the last three years at work or on the road, find out free if you can make a no-win, no-fee claim. Call the National Accident Helpline now on 0800 556 557. Before you buy car insurance from just anyone, just keep asking yourself one question. Could I get a better deal with the AA? Because last year the AA could have saved you up to £199 on your car insurance. Why not see what you could save? Before you buy car insurance from just anyone, just ask. Call 0800 294 7777 or buy online. 32redpoker.com
Welcome back to Chepstow. The penultimate race coming up shortly. It's the 4.55, the Renault Vans Handicap. That's four horses rated 46 to 55, running over the, over the trip of seven furlongs. Just uh, one thing to tell you about uh, a jockey change. Bint Royal will now be ridden by J.P. Guillain who claims three. Now, the last time we took, took a look at uh, the market, Pepper Road was favourite for Ron Bastiman. Uh, Daryl Holland riding this one, who's been fairly consistent performer. Yeah, he has. He's got beaten at Carlisle by Gift of Flame last time. Gift of Flame wins the race every year. He's a horse who's probably got his own ideas about the job, but on his day that he wins, he's a decent yardstick. Um, I suppose, again, it's the Darrell Holland fact that we've had him riding horses at the head of the market today. He's the top jockey here today. And you tend to get... It's a bit like the Kieran Fallon, Frankie, the Tory thing, and we're in to go to the smaller meetings. Their horses are always a shorter price than maybe they might be. Pepper Road has definitely got an each-way chance. There he is in shot, just making his way down to uh, post. Darryl just taking his way slowly, just trotting down at uh, the moment. Temper tantrum, John Bess is second in the market there, 11 to 2. John Bess's horses have been running uh, fairly well recently. But, um, I'm quite surprised that one's second in the market, though, for me. But it's a, he's a while since he's shown his best form, this horse, albeit he is fairly handicapped. He's operating at 55 now. But, I mean, he hasn't won this season and he's run sort of nine or ten times. Yeah. And OK, this is a weak enough race, but he is drawn on the stand side. Mark Savage, a very valuable five-pound claim off his back. But no, I mean, in a, in a wide-open race, he's got some sort of chance, but he's not an obvious one. Yorkie's boy then uh, won here, in fact, um, just when he... Then he came out again and uh, won at Folkestone. I remember, I remember his run here at Chepstow. I remember him running the, I think it was the second to last race on the card, and all of the runners ended up in a bit of a heap. And I thought, you know, he may have been flattered by that, but clearly not. Not. He's been with Norman Berry for a couple of months. He was obviously in fine form. Came out um, the next day and won at Folkestone. <laughs> yeah, he took a, a step down in grade to go and win at Folkestone because it was a regional race. But to be fair to him, here at, at uh, Chepstow last week. Um, he got no luck in running. He, he got chopped off. He had nowhere to go. He didn't get out until very late. And when he did get out, he really did finish with a flourish. Now, I thought he was good value on the day for his sort of half a length win, I think it was, um, because he was always going to win the last 100 yards. But it was only when he looked at the replay again and you actually saw how much trouble he actually was in with a furlong and a half to run that he's done really well to win. I think now when he's older age, probably seven to be a better trip for him. Norman Berry's right. You've got to run these horses when they're in form. They're getting older. Obviously, Jay probably hasn't a hasn't had a saddle on his back since last Saturday, you know, yeah. turned but out in a paddock and enjoying himself. Go and go again. Ball, I mean, looking at his form, obviously, from the past, you know, he was decent enough performance. I mean, this horse won off 100 at York years ago, yeah, but it does, seem like, it does seem like a century <laughs> ago, mind. Um, he's almost as old as I am. In fact, John McCreary told me last week he was older than me. I thought he couldn't be. Um, but I, I'm delighted to see an old horse like this going. He's got the draw. He's yeah. right on the stand that, side. Well, that's, that's what important. I was going to say. Another good thing, he's drawn 20, and he's got Richard Thomas who's a very capable claimer taking three of them. Yeah, rode his 50th winner last week, didn't yeah. he? So, you know, um, there's a man in form as well. I, I think Yorkie's boy is the one they've all got to beat. I mean, yeah. at least he's coming into this race in winning form. He won two races in 24 hours. He's at the top of his game. This or is least, what I'm saying about this window, isn't it? They're not yeah. They, they, they got to, you know, horse in form, stable in form, everything about it. And you see it particularly with six, seven furlong horses. They'll run fairly regularly and they'll win their turn. He's still well handicapped, that's yeah. the thing. Indeed. Well, let's see where he figures in the market with Sean. Well, Pepper Road is the 9-2 to two favourite uh, for this 4.55 and has been uh, steadily supported throughout the day. 6-1 to one on the tissue. It was trading around about 11-2 uh, to two first thing, but it's been backed in now to 9-2. to two. So solid support for this favourite. Temper tantrum out to 11-2. to two. Yorkie's boy slightly uneasy out now to 6.5 to 1. Yorkie's boy, of course, has been in such good form of late. A couple of others worth mentioning from a betting point of view. Armentier, 10 to 1 on the opening show into 9 to 1. That was flagged up uh, as a, a market mover on at the races this morning. Armentier, 14 to 1 top price this morning and as you can see now 9 to 1 and Super Song, 25 to 1 this morning. Super Song is now 14 to 1 so uh, some interesting moves there. Now let's uh, bring you up to date with what's happening at Laytown as well for the 5 o'clock. Kid Creole is the 3 to 1 market leader there. 7 to 2 Kalani Star, 9 to 2 Moon at Midnight, 5 to 1 Bosha Val, 6 to 1 Caviar Royale, it's 10 to 1 bar those. Reminder of a couple of uh, jockey changes for you at Chepstow. Number 2 Bint Royal is the mount of Jean Pierre Guillambert, who claims 3. And number 20 My Girl Pearl is the mount of Nicky Mackay, who claims 3. The next from both Chepstow and Laytown, just moments away. 
32red.com. Are you a homeowner who could benefit from an ocean finance loan? Perhaps by reducing your monthly outgoings by consolidating existing debts, home improving, or simply treating yourself to whatever you have in mind. Many already have. I saw the advert, I saw people who looked like I was in my situation, looked like honest, normal people, not actors. We'd looked at a couple of companies, hadn't we? Yes. And Ocean Finance seemed really friendly. Every time we contacted them to find out at what stage our claim was, they seemed to know who we were and, and what we were about. Everything was handled very efficiently and everything was settled within three weeks. It was as though a great weight had been lifted and I had the first good night's sleep in I don't know how many months. Ocean consider all circumstances and rates are competitive. So for that homeowner loan of up to £100,000, call us now on 0800 916 9120 or apply online at oceanfinance.co.uk. How could you lay your hands on several thousand pounds cash? I don't know. Raid my savings. And your wife and kids, too. <laughs> it would have to be a lottery win. I've got an absolute certainty. 3.30 at Kempton. <laughs> no one gives that kind of money away anyway. <laughs> Transfer your mortgage to the Chelsea Building Society now and they'll give you a cash reward of several thousand pounds. I don't want to move. It's taken us five years to sort out the kitchen. You don't have to move home. Chelsea will even pay the legal fees. Just phone 0800 341 341 for your free information pack. Sounds interesting, but I'm busy. I just don't want the hassle. Chelsea have made it very simple. Everything can be done by phone and post. It costs nothing to find out. What was the number again? Call Chelsea now on 0800 341 341. Then start planning how you'd spend the money. You could buy that horse of yours, let alone back it. 32redpoker.com Well, there's not many to load for our next live race action, the 455 here at Chepstow. We probably have to give a quick squeak to Armentier as well. That one had been uh, clipped in a point. Yeah, Armentier ran really well here last week, third behind Nautical. Good run. Uh, for me, I'd be putting Yorkies boy and Armentier up against the field. OK, they're almost all in, so let's hand over to Mark Slater. Thanks very much, Zoe. Not too many more to go in. There's a colour change in this one. Pagan Storm now in white with the dark blue chevron. Also got a sheepskin noseband. Colours uh, different to the morning paper. Only a couple to go. Looks as if uh, Ice Diamond will be one of the last to go forward. Drawn uh, over towards the far side in stall two. And this one may well complete the lineup. They're all in. And they're off, racing over seven furlongs and uh, breaking away through the first furlong. Yorkie's boy pretty well there towards the near side with my girl Pearl. Espada, though, has the overall lead, showing the way to Caffili Gal, Bint Royal, Mr. Regent, another one who's giving chase towards the uh, near side. And towards the far side, Philly Moo, the grey, showing plenty of early dash, but it's just Espada with the advantage from my girl Pearl and Mr. Regent as they cover the first quarter mile. Yorkie's boy, the grey, is on close terms with this leading group. Armentier near them towards the stand side. Caffili Gal's just off the pace with Bint Royal, also well there too is Parker and Philly Moo but they're very closely grouped as they come to pass the uh, halfway point of the contest Espada now being ridden along as my girl Pearl travelling strongly comes through to take it up on the near side still well there Mr Regent and Yorkie's boy and Armentier, Caffili Gal's always been handy out in the centre of the course as they head now down inside the last two furlongs and it's my girl Pearl from Mr Regent and then uh, making some ground is Armentier towards the leaders and Temper Tantrum with the cheek pieces is staying on they're coming down towards the final furlong, Captain Cloudy, another one who's making ground near side. My Girl Pearl with the advantage from coming there strongly. Axe and Deer in the centre and also Pepper Road is uh, running on well. And then comes Armentier, the near side. But My Girl Pearl's been there throughout and will go on and score from Pepper Road in second. And then Axe and Deer in third. Armentier fourth. Temper Tantrum was fifth and Ice Diamond next. Yes, 
2020. Well, congratulations to uh, Nikki Mackay then, the man on board Second My Girl Pearl, Pearl making all to win uh, this 46 to 55 handicap over seven furlongs. And you'd have to say she stayed on pretty well, actually. Yeah, she, she ran here again last Friday and she made the running on that occasion as well. But on that occasion, I'd put her up as a huge negative because she was so wound up in the paddock. And on that occasion, occasion she finished 60 Yorkies boy. Um, today, you can see what I mean about it. She really does drip with sweat, but it obviously mm. is her. And sort of, I haven't seen her sort of 10 days ago. I wouldn't have put her up as a negative today, even though she was exactly the same. Stuck to her job really well. Looked like Armentier was coming with a chance in this side, but probably find seven furlongs of this ground sharp enough. But no excuses for anything else. The winner was always in position A um, and everything else was there to get past it but they couldn't. Yeah, nothing else really came into too much uh, contention so my girl Pearl putting up a good performance there under jockey Nicky Mackay obviously gaining some compensation uh, for earlier because I know he got beat on the, the Luca Kamani uh, run on that particular occasion um, June Raider won that particular race so my girl Pearl then wins the seven furlong handicap and uh, of course is just making their way Back, just pulling up before back, coming back into the winner's enclosure. But as you said, a pretty good performance there. Now we're going to move across the Irish Sea to Laytown because that's where our next live race section comes up. So first, let's get you a show with Sean. Kid Creole, the market leader, did touch five to two, but back out now to three to one. Kalani Star four to one, nine to two. Beau Cheval five to one. Moon at midnight. Caviar Royale is a six to one chance. My raggedy man. Burma Hobo 10 to 1, Lease 12 to 1, Greek Revival and Ragadino are 20 to 1 chances and that gives you a full show from Laytown because once again 11, 12 and 13 the reserves which include uh, oh, Ballinger Ridge do not go. Now, confirmation of the result at Chepstow. 20, My Girl Pearl, the winner at 20 to 1. Good spare ride for Nicky Mackay. Second was number 5, Pepper Road, the 9 to 2 favourite. Third was number 13, Accender at 20 to 1. And fourth was number 19, Armentier at 10 to 1. All 20 ran in the 4.55 at Chepstow. So now our next live race action coming up then from later and we just saw there in the show that um, Kid Creole is the favourite and they're off and running so let's join Desi. All the runners pulling up uh, in close proximity to the start and now going back to rejoin the starter. Odaro the second on the Okay, so there's obviously been a, a full start at uh, Laytown, so they're obviously going to have to bring them back into line. So it gives us a chance to talk about uh, Kid Creole and that bit of form with Bidelli. Yeah, I mean, that sort of brought an end to his um, his winning run. He'd gone up £23 in the handicap. The important thing with this horse is he did win his maiden here last year. So he's one of the very few horses going to lay town today that have actually got course and distance for him. Plus the fact that he, he won three on the bounce up to Curra all over this sort of trip. Very impressive. Hard to get away from him. Bermajo leads from Bragadino. They're followed by my raggedy man. Just behind these on the inside is Caviar Royale, then Moon at Midnight. But on settling down now, it's Bragadino who's showing the way, being followed in second place by Bermajo towards the inside. Couple of lengths back then to Lise, and on the outside, Beau Cheval. They're being followed by Moon at Midnight, my raggedy man and Kalani Star, as they race on now towards the final half mile. And the leader is Bragadino from Bermajo, Caviar Royale on the inside. Moon at Midnight is next, followed by by Kalani Star, my raggedy man, Beau Cheval towards the outside, and then comes Lise. Kid Creole towards the back. They're racing down towards the final two and a half now. Caviar Royale and Derek O'Connor come there on the far side to lead. Followed by Moon at Midnight on the near side, Jamie Codd. They're being followed in third by Beau Cheval. They're racing inside the last furlong now. Caviar Royale pressed by Moon at Midnight on the near side. Making ground My Raggedy Man between horses and then Beau Cheval. But it's Moon at Midnight, the leader from My Raggedy Man, Caviar Royale. And on the run up towards the finish, it's Moon at midnight driven out by Jamie Codd going to score from my raggedy man Beau Cheval is third then came Caviar Royale and Kalani Star
Moon at midnight then, finishing strongly to win, beating my raggedy man, who's back in second. We should really talk about uh, the start of this race. Yeah, because, it's, a uh, it's a parse of a race. Yeah, exactly. Favourite, three to one, five to two favourite. It's turned completely the wrong way and the starter lets him go. I know there was um, a full start, obviously, and I, I don't think enough time was given for them actually really even to, to <laughs> form a line. They didn't start on a proper line. Uh, well, we better talk about the business end as we got yeah. it here. This winner is absolutely bolted up, trained by Robert Waiting. Osborne, ridden by Jimmy Codd. Um, was always going to win from a long way out, and uh, no dangers ever come from behind. Uh, my raggedy man stayed on really well for second. And Favourite backers are going to be a bit pig sick, aren't they, with that? Well, I'm just a pig, bit pig sick for the rules of racing, I'm afraid, because if jockeys, trainers, lads, whoever it is, do anything wrong, they get nailed good and proper with fines and here everything you are, here like are. that. Let's look at it again. I mean, look, he's turned completely the wrong way, and they are off, you yeah. know. I mean, we'll probably we'll probably take a look at it again because it's very very clear actually you've got Kid Creole the favourite there and the yellow colours with the green sash and the red cap and he is completely he has to spin round yep. uh, left handed completely facing the wrong way. I mean like I said goes under this goes down under the category of farce I'm afraid you know horses being well backed down to five to two favourite whether he'd have won or not is totally immaterial the fact of the matter well, we'll is never know. he <laughs> didn't have a fair start simple as that and it's the starter's fault because he is he's actually walking the other way when they jump off look what the horse has done is whip round to come after them you know but the others he's actually walking you've lost a few strides there to be fair so you've lost a lot more because the horse is actually walking if they show it again he was actually walking in the wrong direction when the starter's hand went down I mean to all intents and purposes he wasn't taking part in the race mm -hmm. you know I'm sorry but this one goes down under the category of farce Yes, it does indeed, and uh, we'll never know, although the winner did win well, and that was Moon at Midnight. There he is in shot, number four there, trained by R. Osborne. Robert Osborne, Robert. yeah, owned by his, his mother. Um, Robert's father, Paddy, was a very successful trainer many years ago in Ireland, and Robert took over from him, and he's doing really well um, with both flat and jump horses. OK, well, let's give you the full result. Confirmation of the result then a win for number four Moon at midnight at nine to two. Second was number five, Maya Raggedy Man at ten to one. Third was number two, Beau Cheval at nine to two. They went without the reserves. Ten ran in the five o'clock at Laytown. That brings you bang up to date. We'll be back after a short break where we'll be taking a look forward to uh, a good weekend's racing with an outstanding race, of course, at Leopardstown, the Irish Champion Stakes. We'll also be having a look at the last classic of the season, the St. Ledger. 32 red.